Hello, my name is Amina and I'm your decision-making specialist. And today I made a decision. Today is Juneteenth and that is a celebration of a proclamation given 155 years ago by a man named General Granger of the U.S. Army during the American Civil War. And I had not read the exact proclamation. And yes, I'm embarrassed. And today I read it and I want to read it to you. It's not that I don't think you can read. It's just, I want to point a couple of things out that I noticed that maybe you would notice, maybe everyone has noticed and I'm the last one. So here we go. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters, and slaves. And the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. Wow. Absolute equality, personal rights, rights of property, separated. Each one has their role. Sounds pretty spiffy, eh? Well, listen to this. It's just a little pesky sentence that comes after that. The freed men are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and work for wages. Wonder what that means. How free are they? That they're free to quietly remain with the people that have abused them. And the next line, they are in the freed slaves are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts. I may have my numbers wrong and I remember something about 200,000 black soldiers freed, not allowed to be at any part of the bases and that they will not be supported in idleness, either there or elsewhere. So you stay with your former master, who is now your employer, who will now pay you wages if you stay quietly and idleness is not allowed anywhere so there you go and that is from general orders number three headquarters district of texas galveston june 19th 1865 there you go. Well, my gosh, why is everyone out in the streets protesting? Why are they hollering Black Lives Matter? There was a proclamation about two and a half years before that. Lincoln freed them. What is the deal with these people? I'll tell you. 155 years later, 
and they are not going to sit quietly. They are not going to have to congregate there and not there. They want the right to be idle, whatever that means. Most of all, they and those of us that are out there supporting them in our very best way, in our ignorant way, because we don't know, we've never and never will know what it's like for them and their history. And so we can stand outside their history and care because we have our history. If we're from here, we have a certain history about what happened. If we're not from here and we're from another culture or country, we still have our knowing that each person deserves to be able to speak their truth and to be idle if they want. Most of all, to be doing whatever they choose to do without more fear of death, of unjust behavior, of people still treating them as if they're conditionally free. And I know that I'm saying all of this in a very awkward way because a part of me doesn't know if from my culture and having the skin of a white person has the right to say all the things I'm saying. I know from my culture, it's not okay for me to want something for myself that I don't want for somebody else. I have no right to ask or accept something that I am not willing for someone else to have. So when I am supporting Black Lives Matter, I am not saying that they're the only people on the planet that matter. I'm saying they deserve to matter in more than just words, more than just a sign, more than just a phrase or a slogan. And that is what I'm struggling with, this proclamation. And right after the proclamation are all these other words. And I am guessing it's because those masters, now employers, want one more bale of cotton, one more harvest from those ex-slaves, freedmen, who are working quietly in their appropriate place. Guess what? I don't think there's an appropriate place for anybody. I think that we have the right, no matter what, to venture into wherever we want. Doesn't mean we take things over. It just means 
We have the right to breathe. We have the right to go jogging. We have the right to walk out of our house. We have the right to be idle and to feel safe. Even if we're not doing something productive every second of our lives. 155 years later, out in the streets are those many, many people, except you will notice they're not disquieted ex-slaves. They're not disquieted black people. They are other people that also believe that being free does not mean you have to sit quietly by. It means you have rights. And this is not, I am hoping, just a moment. I want this to help make that proclamation really come true about the free people and the freedom of rights, and the freedom of property, and the freedom of life. Sorry if this is fumbly, it's just straight from me, and I'm just grateful to be able to say it. Thanks for coming, and I hope you'll come back tomorrow. I'll be here and I will be watching for you. Go out. Don't be quiet. Take care. Bye for now.